In this video, we're going to give you an overview of the clipart files that are included with Aspire. I'm going to show you where the files are located, some of the special features that some of the files we've included have incorporated within them, and also give you a quick guide of how to import and load the files into the software. The Aspire disk contains almost 500 different individual designs. Many of these come in multiple styles or variants, all of which can be loaded into the software and used in different ways as we're going to show you here. In total, there's over 1200 files included on the Aspire disk. The files can be accessed from the DVD itself, or as you'll see when you install the software, there's an option also to install the clipart files, which will copy them from the DVD and put them on the hard drive of your PC, which makes them easier to access. When you do that, the files will be located either in the Documents folder, if you're running Windows 7 or Windows 8, or in older version of Windows, you'll find them in My Documents. If we look here, this is Windows 7 PC. Under Libraries, I can see the file Documents there. Within there, we see they have this folder called Vectric Files. I'm going to go into there, and you can see that when I installed the software, I chose to install the clip art, the documentation, and also the tutorial files as well. As I said, if you haven't chosen to install these on the hard drive, you will be able to find these folders on the installation DVDs. Before we go into the clipart folder, I just want to show you something in the documentation folder. If we go into here, you can see there's a PDF document called Aspire 4 Clipart Guide. This is kind of a written version of this video, and it'll give you some information about the files that are included on the disk and would certainly make a useful reference. If we just double click to open this, Go up to view and just change the page display so we can see a couple of pages at once. Here you can see we've got a list of all the files that are included, an overview, some information about the file types and naming conventions we've used, a guide to the different folders that the clip art's divided in, and then a catalog that shows you all the individual pieces. And you can see here there's a lot of these that we can choose from when working in the software. We'll demonstrate some of these file types throughout the video here. This document can be found on the website and downloaded even before you buy a copy of Aspire so that you can see it and reference it. It's also very useful to print out so that you've got a document that you can look through, um, sometimes a bit easier to browse things when they're printed than they are to look at on the screen. Let's just close that down. Let's go back up to the Vectric Files folder. And then here in Windows, we've got the Clipart folder. If I double click and go into here, you can see the folders that we were just looking at there in the document. The main file type you'll find in the clip art is a purely 3D file, and that has a 3D clip file extension. Those files can be imported into any session of Aspire to use as a piece of clip art. Some of them contain a single 3D component, some of them contain a group of 3D components. We'll come on to look at those in a moment. The 2D Vectors folder contains files that only have 2D information in them. If we go into there, you can see these have been saved in a CRV file format. That can actually be opened or imported in VCarve Pro or Aspire. Other folders also contain files that have 2D information in them as well. Panels and Shields and Weaves, we've included a CRV 3D file for each design. If I go into one of these, I can explain this better. Here you can see we have three variants for each of the files and these each have a different cross section that we use to create the weave. In addition to that, we also have the vectors in the CRV 3D file format. The reason we've included these is so that you could create your own version of the weave or use these as a learning tool to see how the vectors were set up. So any of these 3D files that you can see could be imported but also, if we wanted to, I could grab a CRV 3D file, open that in a session of the software. In this case, I've just dragged and dropped that in here. If we look under the layers, you can see that there's a hidden layer. If I switch that on, you can see that contains cross sections. So I can actually use these vectors in order to recreate this weave myself to see how it was made. Or I could make changes to these and create my own version of it. For instance, I might want to come into here. We'll select this cross section, go into node editing, just going to grab that node, move it down with the cursor. 
hit F to fit, tile the windows. Now if I go onto the modeling tab, what I could do is select this vector, go into the extrude and weave tool, use selection, select my cross section there, make sure I've got weave selected and hit apply and I can actually create my own different version of that weave. So some of these are very powerful learning tools, very useful for me to be able to edit and change in order to make my own versions of the files. So that's the CRV3D file that you're going to find for some of the models on the part that will include these. Let's just go ahead and close that now. We'll go back into uh, our Windows view here, go back up to the clip art. So in addition to the panels and shields and weaves having these vector versions of the files in them, in the ribbons folder you can see there are nine files here. If we just stretch the window down a little. Now these include a 3D model but they also include the vectors that we used in order to create them. So for instance if we grab this one and just drag that in here and open it, again if we look under the layers we can see that there are couple of other layers in here and these contain all the vectors that we use to construct this particular ribbon. Now these vectors relate specifically to a technique that we actually go through in one of the tutorial videos where we look at drawing and modeling weaves. So for any of those nine files you'd be able to open them, see the vectors that we use to construct them, use these for practice to recreate the files yourselves or even edit these to create variants of these particular sets of weaves. So some of the clip art included on the disc is really a lot more than just a 3D model. Let's go ahead and just close that again. The clip art guide PDF document will explain exactly which of the files on the disc include these vector versions. Now what I want to do is go back and look at the 3D clip file format which constitute the majority of the files that are included on the disc in order to use the 3D clip files we need to have a session of the software open because the files have to be imported into a current model. So I'm going to click and create a new file. I'm just going to set up a 12 by 12 job and hit OK. We'll tile the windows so we can see the 2D view and the 3D view. As we've been doing up until now, we could drag and drop files into the software directly from Windows. But once we have a file open, we also have access to the 3D clip art tab. We click on this, this allows me to browse the folders on my PC and so I can set this to look into the clip art folder as it's been installed from the disk. So say we're running Windows 7 here so I'll find it under libraries which is under the desktop so if I hit the plus here to open that and then the plus next to documents, the plus next to vectric files and then the plus next to clip art and again we can see the list of folders here. Any of these I can click on in order to see thumbnails in the bottom half of this tab. We have three different thumbnail display sizes. This is on large, we also have medium or small. So I'm just going to click on the medium for the moment. So from these thumbnails we can just click, drag and drop either 2D or 3D data into our session of Aspire. Let's just delete that. Within the other folders you can see that some of the files include multiple styles. These are the ones that are from the Vector Art 3D website. There's over a hundred of these files. They'll include a raised version, so if I click and drag and drop that into there, a dished version, and also a recessed with a faux hand carved edge there. I'm just going to create a zero plane, make it easier to see those recessed files. So there we can see, if I maximise that, we've got a raised version of the alligator, one that sits in a dish, and one that's got this kind of faux hand-carved edge on it there. As I say, there's over a hundred of those files that include the three styles, and they're also detailed in the 3D clip art guide itself. One thing that'll help you differentiate these files, other than the fact you'll see that there are three styles represented, is that we've shaded them in a slightly darker brown. So we come through here, you can see the Bulldog head model, which doesn't include the three styles, is a lighter colour. And also as we work our way through, you'll see other files there that are also shaded lighter that don't include the three styles. Last thing I want to point out is that some of the files include a dash X in the name. That indicates that they were saved as a group of individual components. And so you can actually import those and then ungroup them back into pieces. 
depending on the file will depend how much you'll be able to ungroup it back into its original constituents. What's nice about these files is they can break down into smaller pieces of clip art that you can reuse, but also you can use them as a learning tool to see how different shapes are built up and manipulated within the component tree in order to create a complete model. Let's just take a look at one of these, um, give you an example. Let's just hit page up so we can tile the windows again. I'm going to delete our three alligators there. I'm going to come into um, the decorative We'll just scroll through. So here we can see one with a dash X in the name. If I drag and drop that here, come to the modeling tab. Let's just scale that up so that it's 10 inches and hit F9 in order to center that in the middle of the job. And the little plus here shows me that that's a group of components. So now I can right mouse click on that choose the option to ungroup and it starts to break it down into smaller pieces. Now we'd be able to use those pieces um, or we can delete them or edit them in order to make a new piece of clip art. So any one of these individual bits could be copied and pasted into another session of the software. In this case for instance we might select these pieces, hit delete and we've now changed the design. So now you've seen what a powerful combination of models we've included here both in terms of the things that you could just use as a standalone piece of artwork, things that you can add to existing designs, or parts that you can even learn from or recreate yourself that includes the vectors or the individual components. Before we finish, there's one other folder that I should point out. If we come back to the 3D Clip Art tab, you can see we have a folder called Textures here. If I select this, let's just use the larger tile here to display these, you can see a selection of textures that can be added to the background of a design or perhaps even overlaid onto the top of lettering in order to create a more interesting effect. These are non-tileable but as with all the other components they can be stretched, rotated, smoothed and manipulated in order to use them as you need within your particular designs. So that concludes our overview of the clip art files that are included with Aspire. Thanks for watching.